happens to be Bisexual Awareness Week, and no one has acknowledged it! Lesbian History Month was in March! Nobody said a goddamn thing! Of course, lesbians get a month and we get a week. Nick, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm really, really good. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, first off, congratulations on the movie. Um, I think so many younger people will come in to see this as it is such a, a, a big movie and finally see themselves <clears throat> represented on screen for the first time in, in so many ways. Uh, are, are you aware of the potential kind of cultural impact that this movie is going to have on a generation of kind of queer LGBTQ people? I mean, I, I'm, I'm aware and I'm, I'm very hopeful that it has that sort of impact. It's, it's always a little like, you know, I mean, Billy and I always say like, when we started working on it, we weren't trying, I mean, you know, it's important to tell the story in as big a canvas as possible, but you don't want to get, you know, feel self-righteous and be like, we're making an important movie. Like what we want to do is make a really funny, heartfelt, honest film, you know? And I certainly wanted to use my leverage to tell uh, a gay romance. I think that it's it's insane that there hasn't been one yet. That's the, on this grand a scale. There's been a lot of these stories have been told on streaming in excellent ways. And that, you know, and there's been a lot of, there's been, uh, you know, indies and, you know, that, that sort of thing, but to get to tell it on big, but yeah, but it's, it's exciting to get to tell a fresh story and it's exciting to get to tell a story that will hopefully, you know, be impactful uh, for the LGBTQ community and for young people as well. You know, I have a friend, some friends of ours whose son came out to them when he, a few years ago when he was 10, he is so excited to watch bros. He's a little young still, but the idea that this exists for him to watch is just, it's, it's, it's nice because that I grew up watching, I'm straight. I grew up watching all these John Hughes movies and all these, you know, um, you know, Nora Ephron romantic comedies. And I saw love stories that, and it's nice to be able to provide that for, you know, young gay kids. One of the, the highlights for me all the way through was the fact that it was almost poking fun, being very satirical towards the idea of what rom-coms are. And also enjoying kind of the tropes of that you would see in a rom com. I don't want to give any away, but there's stuff, and I was like, "Well, that's 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 a rom com scene that the movie's making fun of at the same time." Is it difficult to like? It, that's a tightrope walk where you're like, you are making fun of rom coms, but you also kind of there's some rules of rom coms that you know people expect you to obey. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, you know, we we you don't ever want to follow tropes or whatever, you don't, or you don't want it to be stereotypical. Uh, it's funny. I didn't even think it was very. The reason we have like that converse, that the thing he does at the beginning where he pitches the movie to the studio executive isn't really to make fun of romantic comedies, which is, by the way, like probably my favorite genre. But like, but it's to very clearly explain Bobby's point of view on love, Bobby's theory of the world. It, it's to clarify, to make it very clear. Like that was the that was the main thing with Billy that he wanted he wanted the audience to really understand um, Bobby and to understand his journey. And so that's why we did it. And I guess. It also had this weird meta effect on the movie where it seems like we're making a meta commentary on rom-coms. And there's certainly a little bit of that, but I'm not really a meta director. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty earnest, weirdly, in my heart. I'm not like a cynical person, you know, uh, in that way. And so, and, I, and you know, and I think, I think like there's a few things we threw in there, like showing Luke running down the street is certainly a nod to classic rom-coms. But everything that happens in the movie, I think, is, is the next thing that would happen between these two characters. With a slightly, pu some slightly pushed reality, but for the most part, is, it, it feels, I, I buy it all. And, you know, that's why we shot it the way we did. Some of the, uh, again, I don't want to spoil anything, some of the cameos in this I was very surprised by because I actually didn't see a lot of them coming. Okay. But uh, how <laughs> how easy or difficult was it for you to get, I'm going to spoil it, one, Deborah Messing to tear herself apart? <laughs> 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 because so she, you set up who she is and then knock it down completely. <laughs> She was so, uh, she was amazing. We, you know, we asked her from the beginning, we were like, well, if, if they're doing this museum, they need to raise money. There's going to be some ally celebrity who'd want to be involved. And instantly both of us were like Deborah Messing. Like we weren't even, there wasn't like an other person. <laughs> and he knows her from Billy on the Street um, and texted her and she was like, instantly, I'm in. And she was like, when, tell me when and where to show up. Well, there was no like, usually that usually with a celebrity, there's like scheduling and this and that. She was just like, I'm in. And then we delayed because of COVID. And then she was like, I'm still in. Um, and then she she was just like, just wanted to do a good job. She had no thought notes on the script. She had no problem making fun of herself. She thought it was hilarious. And the, the actors from sitcoms are the, like comedy killers. They're like comedy assassins. Like they're so talented. She was finding jokes in the dialogue that I didn't even know were there. Um, 
And that day I was also very nervous because I'm like obviously a big comedy fan and she's like a comedy icon. So I was a little bit like nervous. I'm like, I kept being like, I'm directing Deborah Messing. Holy shit, you know. Um, and so that, there was certainly some of that. But she was so funny and so on it and just really wanted to make sure we delivered that she delivered. Um, she also told me that it was the first time she'd cursed uh, in something, which I, I want more cursing Deborah Messing because there's nothing funnier than that. <laughs> I did not know that. And I absolutely 100% agree. Um, yeah. I feel like I could talk to you about this movie all day, but unfortunately time has caught up with us. Oh, Nick, sorry. thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. What is going on with you? My whole life, I prided myself on being self-reliant, but this guy has gone into my head. Maybe you're both bottoms and that's the problem. <laughs> Gay sex was more fun when straight people were uncomfortable with it. So